Mostly, bo everybody. So I've been reading up about NEV. So today, I'd like to take the opportunity to share what I learned about NEV because it is a complex and deep subject. So if I get anything wrong, also love to get your comments. Uh, so that we can both learn more about it. Now, NEV is also known as maximum extractor value. Now, this is a both a blessing and a problem to Ethereum. In fact, it's not just Ethereum because this takes place in any network. Just a small prominent on Ethereum because it's a lot more profitable. So today we'll be taking a look to see how this is an integral part of the blockchain network and how does it work. So first, we have to understand what is NEV. Now, NEV refers to the maximum value that can be extracted from a block production in excess of the standard block reward and gas fee. Uh, this can be done by including, excluding, and even changing the order of transaction in a block. Now, in the past, it was known as minor extractable value. Uh, however, because of POS, there's no more minor. So right now, it's maximum extractable value. Now, at a high level, as a block producer, either as a miner or a validator, you get rewarded with block rewards for doing block production and validation. Now, you can think of this as standard rewards, but as a block producer, you actually hold the power to choose what transaction that you want to process, and you can choose to process transactions that give you more reward. So you can deprioritize the rest, and this will give the block producer more profit. And NEV itself is very profitable. So you can see that the total extracted MEV right now is about 675 million, which is one of the reasons why people are interested in this topic. Now, to better understand NEV, we also need to understand how transaction flows. Now, for example, when we want to swap $10 of USDC to ETH on Uniswap, we are creating a transaction. Today, if you are making a purchase on OpenSea, you are making a transaction. Or you are just sending a token to another wallet, you are making a transaction. So all this transaction goes into a mempool. Now this mempool is public, so anyone can view it. It's like a holding area for all transactions. Then the validators will come and pick up this transaction and perform the role of validating the transaction and append them to the public ledger, which is the blockchain. Once this is done, transaction will be success, then you get all your transaction. Now technically, validators have all the power in selecting the pending transaction, depending on the economy incentive. However, in practice, there's this thing called searches. They are independent actors that are actively monitoring for profitable transactions in the mempool and push it to the validators. And most of the searches, they use bots. Now, these NAV profits are being shared with the block producers and most of the time, NAV are being used in a arbitrage condition. Now, you can see that max gas a searcher will do is equal to the max amount of the miner's payment. Now today, if the miner's payment is more than the NEV profit, then it does not make sense. However, there are times where it can be a very profitable trade. So now let's take a look at some value extraction strategy. So the number one will be gas golfing. So this is where the goal is to have transactions that they can use the least amount of gas. Now you need to know that the gas fee is equal to gas price times gas use. And they can do this in two ways. Number one is to have long strings of zeros in their addresses. And number two is to leave small token balances in the contract. Now both of these helps to take up less space and with less space it uses less gas. Then the searchers can pump up the gas price to get their transaction out first while keeping their gas constant. Now the next one is generalized front running. So let's say the bot find a profitable transaction in the band pool. Then the bot can copy the original transaction, pump up the gas fee and have its own transaction to be processed first and front run as the poor retail users. Now we have front running, we also have back running. So when a token is about to list, let's say for example on Uniswap, then they will put 50% of token A and 50% of stable B into a pool. And let's say they do it at 8 p.m. And because there are searches looking at the mempool on the transaction and they spot this trade. So what the bot will do will immediately scoop up the token at a very low price and later when the price starts going up and it will start selling. I think of it being the very first person to trade in the pool. So the fourth one is flash bots. So it connects the searchers and the block producers in a private pool. So that this will not affect the public. 
Because when NEV takes place in a public pool, the pump out gas prices affect us the retail. So the searchers will find opportunities in the main pool. Then you will bundle up and send these opportunities over to a fresh pot. From, so from here, the block builders will build and send it over to a relay. And the most profitable block will be sent over to the validators. So now let us take a look at some of the use cases. Most commonly, they are being used for DEX arbitrage. So you can see from this example, 1000 if as input and 1045 if as output. So what happened is that there are two DEXs, SushiSwap and Uniswap. They are both offering if die at two different prices. So someone can buy the token on the lower price DEX and sell it on the higher price DEX or in a single transaction. Recording. Another one is liquidation. So there will be bots searching for liquidation opportunities to earn the liquidation fees. The third one will be sandwich trading. So for example, A wants to buy 10,000 Uniswap. And because there are bots monitoring the transaction, they see the transaction is about to buy 10,000 Uniswap. So what the bot can do is to front run the transaction and buy Uni token and sell Uni token back to user A. So user A will get price impact and high slippage. So this is what I learned about NEV. I'm still reading and looking into it. I would also like to share some of the resources and reference that I took from. So number one will be from the Ethereum blog. So there is a topic about NEV. So here they give you an example and explain exactly what is it. Another one will be from the Flashbots uh, document and also GitHub. In fact, they have a GitHub that shares more about the interesting use case that you can use with Flashbots. Now there is also the NEV Explorer that I am using to see the transactions that bots do. So if I click on Etherscan, I can learn and see what is the transaction that they did. Now there is also an NEV wiki because there are some of the terms in the flashbot documentation that I do not understand. Then I come here to see if there are any translation or examples. Next will be the Peregrine Research blog post uh, which give a breakdown on what is NEV and the state of the NEV today and what's going to take place. Then there is also this very long Hitchhiker Guide to Ethereum post where it talks about NEV and also innovations such as the proposal builder separation where we will have centralized block production but decentralized and trustless block validation. So a lot of learning on this topic but I thought I'd share with you what have I learned on NEV. I hope you learned something today and thanks for watching. Bye bye.